Hello, yes, good. Um, okay, so on April 1st, 2006, I said something to a close friend of mine that I only realized now, um, seemed very innocuous at the time, but I only realized now was a very serious and life-changing thing that I said. And what I said was this. I said, the only thing I had to eat today was a sandwich, and I'm not even that hungry. I probably threw in dude in there somewhere. <laughs> what I realize now is that that was the first symptoms of Crohn's disease I've ever had. And as the weeks went on, the symptoms that I had continued. I continued. I am sorry. Um, <laughs> I continued eating only one or two meals per day, with the second meal being very forced. And eventually, I started feeling very intense stomach pains that would accompany these. Stomach pains that would become so intense that I would have to stop eating and lie down and wait for these pains to pass. And two years after my first symptom, I, I went to a doctor. Uh, I waited that long. Um, and the doctor sat me down, and he performed some tests, and he told me both what I had, I had Crohn's disease, and what it meant, he said I would, be have, I would have to take medicine for the rest of my life because Crohn's disease has no cure. I wish I could tell myself then what I know now. And what I know now is that I'm not alone at all in these struggles that I went to. There are over 300,000 people in the United States with Crohn's disease, and I've met a few of them. And what's always striking to me is how much we have in common. Of course, we share the, the very superficial fact that we both have some defect in our immune system that manifests itself as inflammation somewhere along the GI tract. On a very scientific and unemotional level, that's what Crohn's disease is. But we both also share this intense feeling of hope, this idea that maybe the pains and symptoms that we feel today will be gone tomorrow. And now there's no, there's no basis for, for these hopes. This, I mean, the inflammation that we have isn't going to go away overnight. But still, we kept this silent prayer in the back of our minds. Flash forward to September of 2010. I was beginning college here, and um, it was a particular, it's already a stressful time in everyone's life, and it's a very particularly stressful time for me. I was 1,500 miles away from home. And this stress fed into itself, building more and more stress. Um, and for a person with Crohn's disease, stress potentially can induce what is known as a flare-up. And what a flare-up is, is essentially if you take my symptoms and if you turn them up to 11, that's what a flare-up is. And I, I wasted no time getting my first flare-up. Um, it was winter term of my freshman year. Uh, I was in multivariable calculus, and up to that point, I had, done, I had done pretty well in, in math classes, both in high school and even in college. Um, and probably because of that, I, I think I felt a little bit too overconfident with my abilities. And I didn't study enough for the first exam. And I realized I didn't study enough for the first exam when half an hour in, I still hadn't written a single thing in the test book. And the test itself wasn't particularly challenging. It might have asked me to do something like this, uh, but the only thing I could see was this. And I started feeling these intense feelings of inadequacy, these thoughts that if I'm here and if I'm already struggling so early in my college career, how could I possibly hope to do well in these upper-level math and science courses that I would have to take? And these feelings of inadequacy fed into themselves, manifested themselves in physical pains. And I felt, I can't describe the pain that I felt, but it was the most um, intense feeling of pain that I've ever felt. And eventually, I had to run out of the testing room into the bathroom and let it all out, so to speak. And I was sitting on, on the bathroom floor, vomiting and crying, and it wasn't a pretty sight. Um, but it was, a sort of a, it was sort of a purging, and it was sort of letting all the poisons in me out. And it felt, I felt a little bit better afterwards, um, physically. Um, and when I went back to the testing room, I scratched a few things, and, I ended up failing the exam. Um, but that taught me an important lesson, that these, these things that are going to be happening to me in my college career, I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm going to have to adapt and change what I do to quell these symptoms and to make it better. Now, it's, it's, it's possible that I'm the only person in this room with Crohn's disease. 
But I don't think I'm the only person in this room who's experienced a flare-up. Um, like I said, we all, my body reacts to stress a little bit differently than yours might, but we all react to stress in some way or another. And as I'm talking about this, you might be thinking to yourself, you might be thinking back to a particularly stressful time in your life, maybe when deadlines and events and work was piling up and it was becoming too much for you to handle, or maybe it's something like realizing that a loved one is gone. And if you're thinking about these stresses, and if you're thinking to yourself, how did I get through that, that's normal. That just means you're stronger than even you think you are. My second flare-up happened um, the next year, um, fall term of my sophomore year. Um, up to this point, I had sort of taken for granted, and, and it was just a known fact that I was going to become a doctor, that that's, that's what I wanted to do. But I never really asked myself why I wanted to be a doctor. And it was a question that needed to be asked, and a question that I was purposely avoiding, because I think I knew what the answer was. And so I sat myself down, and I asked, I asked this question. I made a pro and cons list. Uh, the pros list was fairly long, but it could be summarized best like this. I knew I wanted to do something in science. And all my other biology friends were, were very interested in medical school. And that just seemed like the thing to do. Um, but when I made the cons list, it was, it was actually shorter, but it was very clear. It said, it said I wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> Which is concise and to the point. <laughs> but, um, but I, I have great respect for doctors. That should be known. They've literally saved my life at some points. Uh, but I just I couldn't handle the 80-hour work weeks and the nights when you're on calls and the days and weeks when, when you might be away from your family. That, that wasn't something that I would be able to go through. And so I, because of this, I, I felt this intense sense of uncertainty that this path that I had been on my whole life that I had put myself on was now wiped out, and I didn't know where to go. And perhaps somewhat foolishly of me, I, I thought that all my other friends knew exactly what they were doing, and, and people at school at large had a general idea of what path they were on, and now I had no path to go on. And so this uncertainty fed it to itself. I had my second flare-up, intense stomach pains. And fall term was, was mostly a blur. And I would equate it to running a marathon, where I'm running through these pains and these struggles, trying to get to a finish line so I could just collapse. Because I thought that in winter break, I would, I would get better. Um, but when winter break came, I, I wasn't getting better. And I realized that I needed help. So my doctor, um, after running some more tests, he looked at me and he, he told me that I was going to need surgery to remove the inflamed part of my intestine. Um, and he also told me that I wouldn't have time to recover to come back to school winter term my sophomore year. And so I was, of course, very disappointed at this fact, this, that I would be away from the community and people that I've grown to love for 10 whole weeks. And at the time, I thought it was, it was possibly one of the worst things that could have happened to me. But now I realize that it was really the best thing that could have happened to me, because through this time, through these 10 weeks when I was to myself, I had time to breathe, and I had time to reorganize my priorities and, and rethink what I needed to do. And I think people take breathing a little bit for granted. I think people really underestimate the value of breathing. Um, when, we, when we get these stresses and, and these complications that come up, we like to look away from them, but we never just take some time to let them in and breathe them through. The funny thing about stress and, and flare-ups is that they're just experiences and opportunities. And from these experiences and opportunities, we, we grow from them, and we move past them, and we heal. My final flare-up is a little bit of an, uh, of an interesting one, um, because it hasn't happened yet. But it's sometime around graduation. Because this is, this is going to be the time when 
things really become real when consequences become much more severe, going along with a lot more responsibilities that I have. If I miss class on Monday, the worst thing that'll happen is that I'm going to have to relearn the material on my own. If I miss a bill to pay, I don't get water for that month. And these, it's, it's sort of surreal to imagine that in eight months, this, these sort of pains that kept me out of school could be happening. But the advantage that I have on my side is that I'm aware that it's going to happen, and I have time to prepare. I have time to surround myself with the resources and the people I need to be around with to, to get this, to get through this experience, to move past it, and to heal. Perhaps there's a few of you in here who are experiencing what I've coined in this talk as a flare-up. Um, you should know that you have options. You should know that you're going to get through that, but it's not going to happen if just sitting down and, and hoping they pass. You need to move past them on your own. And there's a lot of different things that you might need to do. You might need to adjust. You might need to ask for help. You might need to breathe. And if you're not going through a flare-up, you have what I have, and you have time to do whatever you want to do. I could do things that I couldn't do if I was flaring up. I could travel to foreign countries and eat the local cuisine without worrying about if it's going to upset my stomach. I could travel into foreign commercial districts without having to keep in the back of my mind where the nearest bathroom is. You have time, and, and you should ask yourself what you want to do with this time you have, because you never know when the next flare-up's going to come. But you should also ask yourself, what are you going to do when that next flare-up comes? Do you have time to prepare? Can you move around it? Or are you just going to have to tackle through it? You have options. You have time, and I have time. Thank you. <laughs>